In this video, we'll look at how the Gibbs free energy depends on pressure and temperature because that also gives us insight in how the fugacity depends on these variables. If we start with our definition of Gibbs free energy, and then we're interested in differential form, so dH minus dTs. And so then we'll go back to the first law for a closed system and reversible. So change in internal energy is the heat at it. I'll write that reversibly. And the work at it, where work is positive. If we add energy to the system, we do work on the system. And then we can write the reversible heat transfer in terms of entropy change and the reversible work in terms of pressure times the volume change. Well, to get to Gibbs free energy, we're going to use, so let's start with the definition of H is U plus PV. So DH is DU plus DPV. So that becomes TDS minus PDV from this equation. And then we'll use the product rule. And we notice that this term cancels with this term. So we have DH as TDS plus VDP. Above with our definition of Gibbs free energy, this is DH minus DTS. So that becomes by substituting in for DH and then multiplying this out, TDS minus SDT. And again, these terms cancel. So we end up with the equation that we'll use to calculate Gibbs free energy changes, temperature and pressure changes. And then first what we're going to look at is a single component system at constant pressure. This term goes to zero, there's no pressure change, so we're looking at the case minus SDT. So this gives us an idea of how we expect Gibbs free energy to change. So this is the plot. I have Gibbs free energy, that's this line here. The entropy change, so as the temperature increase, entropy as the temperature increases. These data were calculated from a program where we stepped along. We didn't pick a fine enough step in the sense that this is a vertical change. This is the entropy change. This is the delta S for vaporization. This is delta H for vaporization. Liquid at low temperature, vapor at high temperature. Enthalpy increases dramatically, entropy increases, and then the Gibbs free energy decreases. So notice the Gibbs free energy doesn't change very much with temperature for the liquid. So this is the equation for constant pressure. So this says, as I raise the temperature, entropy is a positive term, the Gibbs free energy will decrease. Since entropy is a small term for the liquid, then this change is small. Entropy is a much larger term for the vapor, so notice then the Gibbs free energy changes much more for the vapor. And also very important to notice that when we have the phase change, so right here we go from liquid to vapor at constant temperature and pressure, there's no change in the Gibbs free energy. And that ends up being one of our equilibrium criteria that the Gibbs free energy is the same in both phases. Now we want to look at this same starting equation for single component. Now we're going to look at constant temperature, which means this term goes to zero the change in Gibbs free energy is VDP. This says as I raise the pressure, the volume is positive, the Gibbs free energy increases. If we look at a gas, and let's for now look at an ideal gas, then volume RT over P, where that's a volume per mole using specific volume here. DG is RTD log of pressure. And for a liquid, dg is the volume of the liquid times dp. Remember the volume of the liquid is much smaller than the volume of the vapor. And so we were looking at water and we'll continue water and steam. So let's look at 400 Kelvin, the volume of the liquid. So I just from steam tables listed the volume of liquid and volume of vapor. You can see there's a factor of 700, more than 700 between the two. And so when we look at this term, we can see that Gibbs free energy is not going to change very much for the liquid when we change the pressure, but it does for the vapor. So 
here are the data for Gibbs free energy, in this case also enthalpy as a function of pressure. Enthalpy goes through the step function change. This is where we have our phase change, so this is saturation pressure at 400 Kelvin. Of course the entropy also decreases, so the volume is going to exhibit also a decrease and the volume will exhibit some sort of behavior of course on a different scale so we get to the point where we have the phase change and then the volume will hardly change as we change the pressure. Right, so here's liquid, here's vapor, this is just volume on a, a different scale. So the Gibbs free energy here, dg, is volume of liquid dp. It's a very small change, it looks essentially constant, but here the volume of the vapor is a much larger number than as we change the pressure if we're an ideal gas RTD log P right so here DG RTD log of pressure so Gibbs free energy increases as we increase the pressure significantly for a vapor right so this is the vapor region over here the liquid region the Gibbs free energy doesn't change very much it's because of this form for ideal gas at constant temperature, this is isothermal, dg is RTD log p, that's ideal gas. If it's a real gas, then we introduce another variable that tells how Gibbs free energy changes for gas, and that variable is fugacity instead of pressure for real gas. And so we can relate fugacity to Gibbs free energy. So if we were to plot fugacity versus pressure, if we're an ideal gas, that would be a straight line. And then when we became a liquid at high pressure, so liquid, vapor, or gas, phase change here, saturation pressure. For liquid, just like Gibbs free energy doesn't change, since Gibbs free energy related to fugacity, it means fugacity doesn't change very much as we change the pressure. And then for real gas, this would of course not be a straight line, and it would start down here close to ideal gas and it might deviate something like so. Again, fugacity of the liquid equals fugacity of the vapor. The Gibbs free energy of liquid equals the Gibbs free energy of vapor at saturation conditions at vapor liquid equilibrium.